um, some things happened in 07. I realized I couldn't, the, the future was very dark as far as making a living from blogging. Right. Like I'd just been scraping by for years mm -hmm. and, and now the recession was hitting. Right. And it was very dark. But your website saw a lot of traffic though, so. Yeah, but I still realized that, you know, the end was nigh and there had to be some changes made. So right. I started training for a new profession in January of 09, teaching Alexander Technique, which is a totally impractical <laughs> profession, at least for me. What and, is that exactly? Like that's, a that's really a, hard sell. And that's, so like, being, that's, that's, that's like an, a, understanding how, or just like relaxing your, your or I don't really know, I just read a little bit about it, but it's just kind of... I love to talk about the Alexander Technique, I can talk about it all day long. I actually found out about it one sentence in Neil Strauss's book, The Game. You okay. ever read The Game? I, I used to watch the show, actually, with the pickup artist. Uh -huh. That was really funny. You ever watch uh -huh. that? No, I haven't. On VH1, it was with this, this guy named Mystery. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so I read I, his book, too. Yeah, I, I never read But you never read the never book? Well, there's one sentence in there. No, there's one sentence in his sequel, The Rules of the Game, that, that mentions the Alexander Technique. And so I read it, and it and it recommended studying something like the Alexander Technique so that you'd have better posture. And I used to always have really bad posture. And How you said that? Right, right, right. So it'd make you more successful with women and... Uh, it also said it would help with the voice, and I'd often had voice problems, and uh, it said it had various health Your benefits. Your voice is like too deep, or...? No, actually it was the opposite. In high school, I broadcast on the community access channel on cable TV, uh -huh. and they called me the squeaking deacon. <laughs> like, it would squeak. It was, like, not pleasant. And I worked for three years in radio, and it was a problem there, too. And it's a particular psychological issue for me, because my father is such an accomplished public speaker. Mm -hmm. And I could never get him to teach me how he was able to project his voice effortlessly. Mm -hmm. I would strain, and the more I'd strain, the worse my voice would sound. And he'd say abdominal breathing and this and that. I could never get what he was saying. So I had, you know, my time in radio, like every month I tried harder and my voice got worse. So it was mm -hmm. like totally humiliating. So I'd always had these voice issues. Well, it voice, seems fine now. It's now, yeah, after three years of Alexander mm -hmm. Technique teacher training. So those various things propelled me into studying the technique. So the technique is a way of noticing how you respond to stimuli and letting go of those responses that don't serve you. So for instance, one of the most common reactions to stimuli is the fight or flight reflex, which is like if a loud noise goes off, there's a universal reaction. The head rotates forward, pushes forward, rotates back, compressing the neck, shoulders hunched, the whole torso. This is the fight or flight reflex. And this is maybe a great place to fight out of, mm -hmm. and even to launch a, a flight out of, but if you get stuck there, a lot of people get stuck here, mm -hmm. like this, you know, all the time, and the older they get, the more stuck they are, mm -hmm. and so the more entangled they are in their habits, so the Alexander Technique helps you to notice what you're doing, Interesting. and then if, if you're doing things that, that are hurting you, it shows you how to let, it, let them go, so it's really a technique of subtraction. Mm -hmm. And who is Alexander? So he was an actor, an Australian actor who lost his voice, and he sat down in a room full of mirrors and kind of noticed what he was doing, that when he tried to project, he, he would tighten his neck, kind of compress his torso, and put a lot of strain on his larynx because he was tightening his neck and compressing his torso. And so as he learned to let go of that, he was able to speak and project his voice effortlessly and, and not lose it, even when he was speaking to a a rowdy room of tin miners in Australia. He was Australian. And so he moved to England after discovering this technique, became a, uh, like a voice teacher. And he was kind of known as the breathing man. And he was making the equivalent of a million dollars a year within a couple of years wow. of moving to England just teaching people. So it's been around about 120 years. How many other um, specialists or trainers are, are there? The we call ourselves teachers because uh -huh. uh, we're not like chiropractors okay. or massage therapists where the student is, is passive or the patient is passive uh -huh. and the, the chiropractor cracks them or the masseuse okay. massages them or the acupuncturist puts needles in them. We teach people so we don't really do anything for them, we just help them notice. So mm -hmm. we call ourselves teachers and we regard it as an educational model rather than a therapeutic medical model. And so there are about 4,000 in the world more than 600 in Israel. Wow. So when you get into it, it's so intoxicating that it can serve as a substitute religion. So that's my theory why so many Alexander teachers are secular Jews. Interesting.
not many Orthodox Jews. I'm maybe the only Orthodox Jewish Alexander teacher in the United States. There yeah. are a few in Israel, but wow. I think I may be the only one in the United States. There are about 50 or so Alexander Technique teachers in Los Angeles, probably a couple of hundred in New York, about 4,000 around the world. And you have a few students? I have a few students, but it's I found it hard to get students. Uh, one is it's generally hard because people have to be willing to do the work. All right. So you can go to a chiropractor and get fixed, mm -hmm. or a masseuse and get fixed, or an acupuncture and get fixed, and you don't have to do anything. Right. You just go there and they crack you. But that's only a temporary fix. But that's yeah. only a temporary fix. So we work with people on their habits, right. like your back's weak from sitting in a chair all the time, so right. your t typical pattern is this. Right. And then the older you get, the more weak you'll Down, get, yeah. and the more hunched and collapsed you'll right. get, and the more difficult the task of daily life will be, from sitting to standing and then driving in a car. No, okay, so let's say you work out, you've got these problems, let's say Jay Firestone starts working out. So you've got all these... I might already work out. <laughs> okay, you, let's say you work out more. <laughs> okay. Um, but you work out, and yet you find it hard to sit up straight. Right. Your back is weak. Even mm -hmm. though you do all this workout, your back is weak, so even though with some effort you can sit up straight for a few minutes while we like focus the attention on you, right. soon you'll be back to your slump. Mm -hmm. where you'll be collapsing down because your back is weak, it's not used to supporting yourself and the back is weak because you sit in chairs so much. Right. Sitting in a chair is horrible for you. Yeah. Weakens the back, puts a lot of stress on the spine, it kind of compresses you and causes a lot of trouble. Is it just sitting in a chair or is it like just like sitting in general, like if you were to sit on like a ball or something, you know, like one of those... Uh... There are better and worse ways of sitting, but all sitting is bad for you. Okay. So that's a lot better than this. Because right. when you have back support, you get lazy, you use the back support, mm -hmm. your back gets weaker, the more you need the back support, and it's right. a vicious cycle. Right. So it's 50% better to sit without back support, Okay. because that way you have to use it. But okay, let's just say you work out. Um, you will still take your ingrained unnecessary tension patterns into your workouts. So mm -hmm. you'll do your workouts with these ingrained tension patterns. Your workouts may still do you good, or they may just ingrain your bad habits even worse. Oh, yeah. So you may, many people actually resort of working out is they're in no better shape. Mm -hmm. Like you take someone with all these destructive pull down tension patterns and give them exercise, and they may initially feel better, but eventually the habits will just get stronger and stronger. Right. And uh, same with yoga. Like I see a lot of people kind of limp into yoga with their various aches and pains and then they limp out of yoga and they feel like, oh, I just don't need to make myself better and uh -huh. help my posture. But no, you just ingrain your bad habits. Mm -hmm. Like, so you see everything they're doing, you see them tightening the neck, compressing the neck, compressing the torso, mm -hmm. because we all tend to react to stimuli in predictable patterns. So whatever your reactions are to sitting and working on a computer will be very similar to you speaking publicly driving a car, chopping vegetables, hmm. or whatever you do, you're going to take the same tension patterns. So when Video J goes, works out, he takes the same tension patterns, and working out, it's not going it's it's to solve, solve the problem, it may not even ameliorate the problem. It may actually make it worse. I'm not saying it is, because I haven't seen yeah. you, I don't know exactly what's going on with you. Well, I can bench press about 4,000. You know, right, right, right. So. You can bench, like someone can bench press a lot of weight, and yeah. yet their back can still be weak in various ways so that they can't sit comfortably mm -hmm. in in uh, a store. So, you know, we work with people to notice what their hmm. um, unnecessary tension patterns are, and it's not a quick fix, it takes and it, time. It, it's not just about your back, you said it helps your voice and your... Uh, yeah, well, because you when you'll notice that when you're slumping, right. you know, you're having some voice trains, we were talking tonight. Mm -hmm. And because uh, everything was kind of collapsed, right? That's kind of your your pattern is is to well, collapse. Thing, and when yeah. you collapse, it causes pressure on the larynx, and so and you notice when you put you know your your cup down, like the head tips back and compresses. Right. There are more joints in the neck than anywhere in your body. So when the neck compresses, which is like a habitual response you have to stimuli, your whole torso will compress because mm -hmm. there are joint systems connecting with your neck throughout your torso. So when you, you've got this habit of tipping the head back and compressing, which is sending all this compression throughout your body. Interesting. What were you going to say? Um, no, I mean, I definitely know that I do that. However, it's, it's, it's funny that I, I sometimes mumble, you know, just mm -hmm. talk. But when I do the video with you, I'm always very, like, you know, 
uh, I'm, I'm upright. And right, right. And then you're up. Right. You're up. And, and I'm so doing you're going to do it. Right. Now and, and I know what I'm doing. And right. And, you know, it's kind of a show. But, but, but did you feel some voice strain earlier in the show? I don't yeah, know I think so. I, I was hearing it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's because it's when you collapse, when... You when should the, say something next time, you know? Um... I'll, I'll work with you a little bit um, as we're doing the show. Um, when we collapse, then the lungs don't have as much room to breathe. Okay. And they don't have as much room to expand. And when you kind of collapse down on the the larynx, like with the, when the head tips back and the, the neck compresses. So you'll notice the difference in the quality of my voice now as my head tips back. So my name is Luke Ford. I come from Australia. I was born in 1966. I came to California when I was 11. Notice how much more thin and strained my voice is here than when my voice comes back to here. Down here, yes. So try that. So one, talk constantly. Two, one, two, three, four. That is the strain. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, notice yeah. the difference in the quality of your voice. Yes. So when the neck's tight or compressed, it puts pressure on the larynx mm -hmm. and you're, you know, you'd lose your voice after a while. I actually thought about taking a voiceover class to mm -hmm. kind of help um, garner more uh, more control over my voice. I right. have a, a, a deep voice. Right. I don't know. I've always decided that you have a good voice. You have a good radio voice. Now you should do you, know, you can do podcast too. Yeah, and but I, I used to have the squeaky voice. Really? It was even like, like three years ago. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, it wasn't as good as it is now. Even okay. even like two years ago, I had I had some trouble projecting. Mm -hmm. um, it actually took. Uh, quite a bit of work. But here, I'll just work with you for, for a couple of minutes on the okay. show. So let's move the, the chair this way, because okay. actually, actually we do most of our work in a stool or a chair. Okay. So I just want you to um, sit down on the chair. All right. And then tell Not me what... sign anything? No. Okay. <laughs> There's no... Uh, so just notice, tell me what you notice when you stand up. Do you notice anything? Not really. Okay, I want you to stay standing what up. What should I be noticing? I want you to notice the balance of your head and your neck and tell me oh, if it changes well when you sit down. Do you notice any change? Um, not so much when I sit down. Okay, but really I'm, notice. I notice. Maybe the back. Yeah. I'm, I'm so like, really uh, notice. Uh, so uh, let me try again. Let me try again. Yeah. Notice what's happening. Yeah, happen. yeah. I feel like it's. Notice your head's tipping back. Yes. And your neck's compressing. Yes. And so try sitting down. And doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. Notice. Now try not to do it. Okay. Notice how very difficult it is. That's really hard. Because this habit's so ingrained of tipping the head back. It's like you have to, you have to you focus basically, on it. You almost can't get in and out of a chair without tipping your head back. You actually have to try to tip your head the other direction just to kind of counteract that. Right, right, right. Bit. What do you notice going on with your shoulder blades as you're getting in and out of the chair? Probably tightening up and going back a little bit. Yeah, I notice them tightening up. I notice like, a lot of strain between feel, your yeah. shoulder blades. I can feel it right now. I can't yeah, even not yeah, do it. Yeah, it's just doing yeah. it. So this is tightening and tensing. And when this tightens and tenses, that sends tightening and tension throughout your torso. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it's so ingrained you can't not do it. You can't not tighten your torso when you get in and out of a chair. I don't even think I, I know what my torso feels like when it's not tightened. You, you don't. Because what you know is Jay Firestone, what you know is you, is That's, your ingrained it's, tension it's balance. Like, if you were to let them go, you wouldn't recognize who the person was. Yeah, it's you, like when I'm slouching, it feels like I'm... That's familiar. Let go, yeah. I mean, that's familiar to you. So what I want to work on as a teacher is to have you react to the stimuli of getting in and out of a chair without okay. tightening and compressing. Okay. And so what we're going to work on is not good technique for getting in and out of a chair, even though that's the form. Mm -hmm. I really don't care as an Alexander teacher about you getting in and out of the chair with good form, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I care about you learning to respond to stimuli in ways that don't hurt you. Right. Currently, you respond to stimuli with compressing the neck and your whole torso. Yeah. So I want to help you to stop doing that. Okay. So what I'm does that mean about someone's personality? When what kind of you're used to your tension patterns? That's who you are. And I'm if you would let them go, yeah. if you would let them go, you wouldn't recognize yourself because okay. these tension patterns have helped you get through difficult times, like when you've had tests, difficult days at work, mm -hmm. struggling with problems, sure. struggling with girlfriends, struggling with with parents, whatever. You, you've reacted to all those struggles by tightening and compressing, uh -huh. and you've. Tightening and pressing has helped you get through 
to where you are in life today. Right. Like, okay, I've got to hunker down and get through this. Right. And as you hunker down and get through things, you make yourself tighter. Would you say this is like a, a Jewish problem, that, or is it kind of a human problem? It's a human problem, uh -huh. but Jews um, are more human than others in the well, sense that they spend more time sitting down. Yeah, because well, they they, t they tend to be well educated, and with you know, Jews like Woody Allen, you know, or Larry David, I imagine there's a lot of, of tension there. Right, and, right, and, and anxiety. So right. maybe that. You know, right. Well, if you're reading a book, you're usually going to do a sitting down, mm -hmm. and then you're going to kind of collapse in on the book. Or if you use the keyboard or a computer, you're going to tend to collapse in on the keyboard. Okay. Or if you use an iPhone, like this, you, most people BlackBerry. Or BlackBerry <laughs> you're going to tend to collapse yeah. into the BlackBerry because what's going on in the BlackBerry or your so iPad or the computer is so interesting. It sucks you in, and your whole being collapses down onto the so object. So you should teach a, teach a class say how to actually use your smartphone without hurting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think there's probably yeah you know, because a lot people of people are having neck pain. They're, they're, notice, this, uh, this, they're this noticing neck because yeah. they're when you're texting. Yeah, it's, how many people are up right when they're texting? No, when you're texting, switch their fingers when they, they text. Also, everyone texts with their, with their thumbs. They right. should, like, once a week just just use their pointers. Right. So when you there. right, if I was to text, like the, the there's a huge stimulus. This is the stimulus. Yeah. And the stimulus is notice what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. I'm collapsing down into. So how do you text safely? Notice what you're doing. Notice your tendency to collapse and realize that this is an enormous stimulus. So and try to notice what, what your reaction to stimulus are. Let's say you notice are. it, but you still see yourself doing it. Do you have to then make sure maybe you put it don't down do it? and come back. Maybe or put it aside or just okay. Let me come back to zero. Okay, here it is. I want to read. I got uh -huh. an email. I want to read my email. So I'm going to do it without collapsing down into it. So the main thing is to notice what you're doing. Once you notice what you're doing, then you can stop doing it. And then how's it supposed to feel when you're doing it right? It's supposed to feel like you're doing it. It's supposed to be un uncomfortable. Well, it should be easier. It should. Everything should be with more ease, but it won't initially feel easier because you've had these ingrained tension patterns hmm. over 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Right. This is the way you're used to doing it, so the right way is going to feel wrong. When right. you initially do it, because you're used to collapsing down around whatever the source of stimulus is. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're not collapsing, one of the ways you can check is by doing it on video. You can videotape yourself right. doing anything, and you can then check mm -hmm. um, how you respond to that stimulus. Um, but let's just have a look at what happens when you get in and out of a chair. All right, so, let me so I'm just going to work with you. So I'm going to use a combination okay. of words and a very gentle touch. So what I want you to do is to think about freeing your neck. Now, that may not make much sense to you because you, you've got all these years of tension, so you uh -huh. don't know what freeing the neck Free is, but neck. you do know what tightening your neck is. Yes. So you can use negative directions and just say, I am not tightening my neck. Mm -hmm. So, so tell yourself, you know, you just no tell way. yourself silently, I'm not tightening my neck. And the more gently you give yourself the directions, the more effective they are, because if you were to hector yourself, or to give it very sternly, mm -hmm. you tighten in response to that. That's right. So anything that results in unnecessary tightening, I want to diminish. Okay. So the whole so point of this is to let go of unnecessary tightening without collapse. So it's think. not about relaxation because that's collapse. That's most people collapse when they relax. This is about letting go of unnecessary tension. So just think about the neck is free. So I'm going to just very gently bring my hands to your neck. And so, because I've been studying this for years, and I put my hands on, you'll notice a difference. It's mm -hmm. like I'm putting jumper cables yeah. to your central nervous system. Yeah. So my central nervous system is connecting with your central nervous system. I'm noticing your head coming up a little bit. You're letting go your spine and your neck and your head, letting go of a little unnecessary tension and compression, and oh, you're starting to come okay. up a little bit. All right. So, whoa. Yeah. Okay, so keep telling yourself I'm not tightening my neck and then you can even let this be free, let this be free. I don't want you to do anything, this is all primary thought. So I just want you to think about the width across your back as well. So you're not doing anything about the width, you're just thinking about it because just you give yourself a gentle awareness of the width across your back will be a stimulus to help you let go of unnecessary tension patterns and compression patterns and think about not tightening your neck as you sit down. Okay, should I sit down now? Yeah, just think about not tightening your neck. Yeah.
Okay. Feel a little bit and turning it. Yeah, it's not going to feel right because you've had all these years of. Now let this all be free. Let that be free. Allow the neck to be free and think up. Yeah. So I don't, let this be free. Don't. Yeah. And hold. This. Yeah. Just think up. So we want the. Let this be free. Yeah. Don't. Don't do anything. I, I keep. Staying. I know it's really weird. You, you, you're going to have a lot of tension in your arms because you spend so much time on the computer, um, in mm -hmm. particular. So, just telling yourself, I'm going to allow my neck to be free, or use the negative direction so I'm not tightening my neck. And just stay up here. Let's not go down into the chair yet. So, so there's a lot of tension in your back. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking about the width of your back. So, yeah. And so your back's kind of swayed in here. You notice that how yeah. the back kind of sways here it gives you a little bit of a belly there. It's not real. So it's just it's an optical it's just illusion. The sway. Yeah, it's an optical, it's an optical illusion. illusion. But that's because, like most people, you tend to tip back from the hip and then compress the lower back. So that's going to give you some lower back pain, and eventually your back might even go out at times, and you might be immobilized. That's so let's think about the weight the prognosis. I have a lot to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be good. And forget about sitting down. Okay. And so you're just standing up. You just give me the full weight of your. Don't do anything. Let your arms be free. Just allow me to have the full weight of your hand and your arm. Okay. This is just a way of noticing. Notice all the tension in your arm and see if you can let it go. It's hard to let it go. Yeah, it's really hard because you've got 30 years of ingrained. Unnecessary tension patterns. Your body wants to control itself. Your body and, is yeah, trying. Yeah, see if you can let this go no more. So your right hand did not take. Because mm -hmm. there's more, a lot more tension in your right arm than your left. See if you can let it go completely. So now, how does this affect, let's say, you know, if something were happening and you do need that, that fight or flight? Uh, well, then, then, then you use it, like when, when you, you need it. it. Yeah. So but you can control when you're using it, when you're not using it? That's well, you'll automatically it retrain you not to use it. It just r right. It retrains you to let it see so let this go. It'll retrain you to be aware of what you're doing. So if it's helping you, then use it. But if it's not helping you, if you're using it in a business meeting, and you're right. going into fight or flight, well, that's not going to help you. And see if you can let this arm go. What helps me is that I think I'm pretty good at reflexes. So whenever I drop like some toothpaste in the bathroom, I can catch it like really quickly. Right. So I'm wondering, you know, I don't want to lose that ability. Well, it's useless that, that won't be. That won't have, I mean, this isn't going to affect your ability to catch things. Mm -hmm. It's just that when you notice right. yourself oh. tightening up. Okay, here we go. It's going to be very loose right now. Yeah, so just see if you can let go. More control of your right arm. So that you can do things with less unnecessary tension. Because so when the arm's tense, you're going to be more likely to develop carpal tunnel and, right. and other issues. Like every carpal like tunnel is actually quite painful. I don't have it, but uh, yeah. I think one summer on an internship when I was in college, I think they had it. Yeah. And uh, I'd like you to stop part way down, so you can decide when you stop. Stop, but what? stop as you come down to the chair. I want you to stop at some point. So and just hang. So just hang. So this is what we call a monkey. Uh -huh. So when we're like catching serve, you know, when we're pre get, getting a serve in tennis, you know, we go into a monkey. Yeah. A cornerback will go into a monkey. Mm -hmm. This is the position we use all the time. So you should be able to hang out here for a couple of minutes. Now you may not be used to this, so you're going to get very tired. Plus my legs, right? Uh, or I don't know where you'll get tired, but uh, most people tend to get tired. Um, but this is a way of training yourself. And then come a little deeper if you can without going all the way to the chair. And just think about the width across your back, freeing the neck. And notice how your back's kind of rounding because mm -hmm. it's weak. And so it's. it's oh, it should not be rounding? No, you, you really don't want a back like that. You want a back like that. Shouldn't, shouldn't, doesn't need to be. Notice, yeah, it's tensing up in here. Whenever I try and. Put it straight, it tenses up. Yeah, this. yeah, exactly. That's why you need but to it direct need to yourself that, no. with your thinking. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the length of your back from your lower back to out the top of your head, mm -hmm. that will tend to straighten up your back. But if you do it, if you mm -hmm. muscularly command yourself, it will tense up. 
So that's why the Alexander Technique is so much about cognitive direction of your Got movement. Because if you muscularly do it, I'm going to go ahead and come all the way into the chest stool. If you muscularly do it, um, uh, and I'll just move your stool back over, and yeah. we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming. It's kind of like the, programming. Yeah, it's like the matrix a little bit, you know, it's mind, mind control, you know? Yeah, it is mind control, because yeah. it's, it's, you're using your mind to direct how you're using yourself. Mm -hmm. So rather than just like getting lost in abstract thought, or what we really tend to get lost in is uh, repetitive thoughts. You know, we think mm -hmm. the same thoughts 90% of the time, just endless loops. Right. So instead of getting lost in endless loops of worry or whatever, you use your thinking. Right now I'm thinking about, okay, is my neck free? Am I thinking about my head releasing away from my torso? Um, am I thinking about the width of my, across my chest, across my back? Am I directing from my hips to my knees? Mm -hmm. Uh, so when I think about my use, uh, it's unnatural at first, but it's like installing software on your system. So eventually it becomes natural to start noticing. But without this, we don't tend to notice how we do things. Yeah, and I, I, I'm just afraid that I'm going to be, you know, you know, that you have me worried, you know. Yeah, well, you know, if you keep going as you're going, I don't know how much back pain you have now, but it's not really back pain. But you know, you're gonna you could, yeah, get a lot of tension do, in your uh, shoulders. If I do sit ups, like I get back pain. Just like after like the thirtieth sit up. So I bet like the tasks of daily life are not quite as easy as they were ten years ago. Probably not. No. Like, and so you know, in another ten years, they're going to be even more difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's like a spiral, and you know you're going to get some back pain because mostly everybody sits in but a chair. Every, this is something that every person goes through though. Everyone no who sits one. in a chair for at least eight hours a day is going to have back pain. Alright, I'm standing up tomorrow. <laughs> I'm stand up. Well, yeah, standing up is much better. Standing up or lying down is much better than sitting in a chair. And sitting in a stool is half as bad as sitting okay. in a chair. Okay, I'll get a stool. Because this way you don't get the back support. So you, and one of those big balls. Yeah, those, those are, are wonderful. Yeah, yeah, those I'll are wonderful. That's a little more. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the like, uh, you know, the handle, like you just jump around. Oh yeah, yeah. Do they have the office? I don't think we have it. Uh, you don't have balls in the office yet. No, not in the office. No. Well, I'll start something. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs>